Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Michelle Crawford and today we'll be painting a watercolor camera. This is part two, painting the camera. If you'd like to see part one, which was all about drawing this camera and transferring the image to watercolor paper, please check out part one. Otherwise, we'll get started. This will be a longer video, um, more real time. I'll try to speed up a few parts just to make it a little bit shorter, but if you like these real-time videos, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to post some more. So we'll start with a reference photo that I found on rawpixel.com and I've printed both a grayscale and a full color version just so I can make sure I understand where the light and dark values are gonna be in my photo. So we've got the drawing here ready to go and we're gonna start by painting the lens. Now I'm just wetting up the paper on this first circle so that we can drop in some color. And you'll notice I'm going to be painting this lens and really the whole camera from back to front where I paint the layers that would be more toward the back of the plane in first and then I'll paint the ones that are closer to the foreground of the painting last so that I've got some nice dimension and it'll really just help me build up my painting. So as you can see, I'm wetting down the circle and then I'm gonna drop in some pink paint um, and we'll take a look at the reference photo just to, to make sure we're trying to match the colors and the way they're flowing on the reference photo. So I'm just mixing up my pink here and now we're gonna start dropping that in. So if you look at the photo, um, I'm just gonna start with a, a few washes underneath and then we'll start painting more colors on top to grab some more dimension. but. You can see the pink there in the photo, and so I'm just kind of looking at where that's showing through and trying to build up the pigment there. We'll keep this wet on wet and also drop in some of that blue, but we wanna just kind of follow that reference photo as a guideline. Again, this is not hyper-realism. I'm not trying to create a you know completely realistic image of this camera. I'm just trying to um, get close to the image and um, it's still going to be fairly abstract and that's really just the way I like to paint. So I'm continuing to work on this lens. I'm just going to, now that I've laid down a foundation, build up some of the color here for the pink and again kind of looking at the reference photo to figure out where it's most dark on the image and I want this to still be very much a wash. I'm going to put some layers on top of it. All right, now we've laid down that pink layer. Now I'm gonna work on the little red light on this button in the front. So first I'm just kind of wetting up that little circle and making sure I have my paper towel handy. Um, I want to have a little bit of a highlight on this little light. So um, I intend to lay down a light wash and then maybe drop in some color. So now that we've got that paper down, I'm just kind of cleaning up that circle again and we'll drop in that red paint. You can see just touching the paint here, it's just a really tiny circle. It just kind of bled um, right into that area. And so I think we'll let that dry, see how it ends up, and then maybe put another layer of paint over top of it. So now I'm gonna go uh, back to the camera. I don't want to paint anything else in the circle yet until that pink dries. So I'm looking at the highlights I have around the lens and they're almost white in my reference photo, but um, they are a do have a little bit of color. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe paint these in really wet and then blot them up so I can maintain them as a highlight, but we're going to have a little bit of color um, in there as well. And it should also hopefully create like a nice edge around the area so that it's gonna bleed or blend nicely in with the rest of the lens once we get uh, a few more layers of paint down. So as you can see, I've got really wet, really light wash of um, black paint. It's just a, a very, very light gray. Essentially, I took a tiny bit of, of my black and mixed it with a lot of water to make this really, really light wash. And I just wanna kinda get it wet on the paper, let it seep in a little bit so some of that color We'll stay behind and then I'm just gonna blot this up with my paper towel. You see that did exactly what I wanted. Now I'm just going with a little bit of clean water 
um, to try to move some of the pigment around more toward the edge of this area and get some of that lighter highlight back. And then there's another one on the other side of the lens on the left side. And so similar, it's a little bit more blue. We might put a, another layer on top of this later, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing. Lay down a nice, really light wash of this gray. And then once we let it just sit in for a few seconds, we'll blot that back up. And I'm not being too precise here. Again, I just have these guidelines here to make sure all of the lines I'm drawing in this lens are still circular around. They, they're gonna look like the highlights, but um, this is still gonna be abstract art. And so this does not have to be perfect, guys. If your camera doesn't look like mine or if it doesn't look like your reference photo, that's totally fine. Uh, this is all about making some art that's really just yours. So. Let's keep going. Um, I'm just kind of adding maybe a little bit darker on that left highlight. It was lighter than the one on the right and in my reference photo, it is a little bit darker. Um, so I dropped a bit more pigment there and now let's, um, this light is dry a little bit. So I'm gonna drop in a little bit more red here and try to maybe refine the shape a bit and get a little bit of a highlight. And you see, I just, um, left one tiny spot there dry and so now the paint won't move there and it will be a little bit lighter than the rest of the button. So now going back to the lens, I'm trying to match this blue color and I just happen to have some dry paint in my palette that just about worked perfectly. I think maybe this is a little bit of cobalt blue, maybe a bit of pink or purple. I um, can't really remember exactly how I mixed it but I just mix a similar color and now I'm just looking again at my reference photo trying to figure out where some of those um, harder lines are where the pink and the blue meet in the photo and then there are definitely some areas where it blends so I'm just going to lay down some paint first kind of try to work it into the areas that I see it showing up in my reference photo and then I'll use a clean drier brush to blend it around and uh, maybe a little extra water just to make sure things blend nicely. So I've had a nice amount of blue here. I definitely still have some spots that are dry next to that pink. There'll be some nice watermarks and now I'm just dropping in a little bit more pigment in different areas to try to create a little bit more of a, a gradient in the, the color saturation and hopefully it will dry really nicely and help create a lot of the highlights um, and reflection that we see on this lens. So I've laid that wash down then washed and dried off my brush and I'm just going to do a little bit of blending to try to soften where the blue and the pink are meeting. It's definitely more of a blend in my reference photo. And then I do still wanna keep um, some high, high pigment of that pink. So I'll probably drop some more of that in as well um, as this dries, it gets a little bit lighter. Um, all watercolor will do that. So in this image, particularly, we've got a black camera, we've got some darker colors. So we'll be building this up with layers. So I just grabbed a little bit more of my pink and I'm dropping that in again in the edge where I saw it uh, going around the left side of the camera. I'm going to drop some more pigment in right in the middle of the lens itself. And uh, this should dry nicely. I lost a little bit of my highlight there, so I'm just using a small piece of paper towel to blot that up. Um, and maybe we'll let this dry a bit. Just want to refine that shape and again this shape doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be painting more circles around it um, but the essentially the inside of the lens or inside edges that you're painting um, as we layer this should be a little more precise while the outside ones can be a little rough because we're going to be painting another circle around it. So you can see I'm just putting in even more of that pink pigment. I want it to be really bright this lens will be the focal point of this uh, painting. Um, I probably won't do too much detail on the rest of the camera just because I want the lens to be the focal point. Um, 
I think it's really neat the way their light reflects here. I've got the bright pink and the blue together. I really like the way that works. So again, just building up the color, trying to make sure that there are clear differences in light and dark values, and then just going back and forth between my paper, my reference photo, trying to get it as close as what I'm seeing as, as I can. All right, now while our lens dries, we'll start to add some black to the body of the camera here. Using just a regular round brush, I'm gonna focus on getting nice clean edges and then filling in the shape. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this as wet as possible while I'm doing this. And then once I have the shape completely filled in, I'll start adding even more pigment and trying to um, get a really nice uh, texture to my wash. Make sure it's all nice and blended out evenly um, and probably even use a larger brush. So right now I'm just going around the detailed areas and again the filling it in. I want to make sure that my edges are going to be nice and crisp. And again trying to keep my painting or this area that I'm working on wet while I do this. Now I'm just going to continue painting the body of this camera, starting with the outlines, filling it in, and then we'll build it up with some additional pigment and color. Okay, so you can see now I have a nice wash of that black on my paper here, but I want to maintain a highlight on the side, so I'm just taking some paper towel, I folded it, and I'm just going to blot up the highlight that should be there right on the edge, and then we'll clean that up a little bit with a little wet, clean brush, and um, then we'll move on. And now we've got that beautiful highlight back that's gonna really help create some dimension on our camera. And now I'm gonna paint this darker ring around the red light. And we're painting this black ring. It's gonna be right on top of or next to the other side of this camera that's also black. So the way to keep these shapes separate um, so it doesn't just look like one is to paint them at different times so the paint dries at different times. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of an edge um, between them and I may make one a little bit darker than the other as well. Around this top area, again right now just doing some flat black washes, not a lot of detail. We're gonna build all that up with our layers. The body of the camera is dry. You can see, as I mentioned, the paint dries a lot lighter than it is when it's wet. So I'm just going in adding um, another coat of this black paint on the right side so we can darken up the pigment um, before we move to the other side of the camera. All 
All right, now we're going back to our reference photo. I am checking to make sure that my lens is dry. And now we'll go into that next ring or circle around the lens and it's um, use a bit of indigo, a light wash to build that up. All right, now we're going back to the lens of the camera. I'm checking out my reference photo and I see these darker areas inside the lens where we might have some reflections. So I'm just gonna focus on building up the, the darker colors on the middle of this lens. Okay, and now that we are finished up there, we'll move to the other side of the camera and work on this side of the body. Um, this time I decided to go right in with this angle brush. It seemed to help a lot uh, getting a nice even wash and the shape of the brush also helps me get into some of these really tight areas of my drawing. So we'll just fill this area just like we did before, focusing first on the edges, trying to get um, nice clean lines and then filling in the rest of the area and trying to even out the wash. And now we've made it back to our lens. And so I'm gonna go back in to meet up with these uh, areas I've already painted, going with the, the darker black paint and starting to fill in some of the darker areas of this part of the lens that I'm seeing in my reference photo. I'll try to get the area nice and wet first, get my lines defined before I start dropping in more color. Okay, so this was the point in my painting that I realized that I had painted over my line and you see the camera's black until the very bottom there where it's silver and I actually painted all of it black. So I think I'm just gonna mix up a wash of this light gray and just kind of add that section back onto the bottom of my painting. If something doesn't go right, just make the best of it, guys. This does not have to be perfect, it's art. Doing the same thing to the top section and really I'm just kind of outlining these areas with a wash and then using some clean water to blend and fill it in. And then now um, pulling my reference photo back up you see we've got some um, shadow areas here on the left side of the camera in the same area where we had the highlights on the right side so I'm just kind of checking my reference photo and making sure I've got those uh, shadows and highlights where I want them. Okay, I've let my layers dry a bit and I'm going back to my reference photo. I want to start to paint another layer onto the camera lens and then start to really refine the shape, especially since, you know, I just discovered that mistake where I left out the bottom of the camera. So want to make sure that I kind of reshape this lens and then we'll 
fill in the circle and start painting in some more layers. Okay, now that we've got that ring done and while it's drying, I'm gonna move up here some of the knobs and mechanisms. So I drew these in really simply and I'm just gonna kind of follow the same technique that I did with the other silver parts of the camera where I'm taking a really light wash. I'm kind of painting around the outside and then using some water to fill it in. And then we'll go back and add a little bit more detail on these as well once they dry. Okay, now that that outer ring of my camera lens is dry, I can go back in and start um, with another layer on the lens. And looking at my reference color, I see some light and dark blues kind of blending together. So I'm gonna start with a nice light wash of indigo and then start dropping in some additional pigment and start building up that color and dimension. Back to the rest of the mechanisms. Um, I'm just gonna paint in the rest of these with a nice light wash and then go back in and add some detail. Okay, now that these silver areas have dried, I can go in and add a little bit more detail. And again, this is not a, a still life. I'm not trying to create a, a hyper-realistic painting. I just wanna have a little bit of detail. So going here using some wet on dry technique, uh, still with some light washes, just add some lines and create some detail with these knobs. Um, you know, they would have some like little grips on the side, um, but this is just a really easy way with um, this technique to add just a little bit of detail even if your painting like mine isn't going to be uh, completely realistic looking. Same thing with these little round areas. I'm just going in again with uh, a little bit of that wash and dropping in some shadows to try to create a little bit more dimension. 
we'll add a little bit more paint to that red light that we painted at the beginning. And now that my lens has dried once again, I'm gonna go back and with the indigo and create some more detailed lines or markings here um, to continue building up colors. All right, now it's dried once again. I'm gonna go back around this outside ring to darken it up. Again, refine my shape and just build more dimension. Going back into my silver areas here as well, just to add a little bit more detail in some of the areas that may have dried uh, a little less dark than I was hoping. And then now I think we'll do just one more wash on this lens before we uh, add the last bit of detail. So for the lens, um, we do still wanna have a few highlights. So um, I've got some PH Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. I like to use this on top of my watercolors. If you are not familiar with watercolors, if you use white paint, it's, it's likely not gonna go show through. Um, so this bleed proof white ink is a great way to add some detail at the end of your painting. So I just want to go in and add some highlight lines um, to create some more of this reflection around the lens, make it just some round lines to um, add a little bit more realism to this abstract painting. So I'm mixing some of this white paint in a well here. I'm going to add a bit of water and then maybe just a slight bit of indigo so it's not pure white. Uh, I think that these reflections would have a little bit of color as well. And there is our watercolor camera. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial. Please uh, subscribe to my channel for future videos. And if you would like to see part one of this camera so you can see how to draw and transfer the image to your watercolor paper, please uh, click on that video. Thanks and have a great day, everyone.